Actually, I don't want to talk about what it means to be a hacker today. I want to tell you about a way to change the world. <laughs> but it's based on the experiences that I made by creating the hacker school. Because before that, I didn't know I could change the world. But actually, it's quite simple. All you need is a purpose, a plan, and people. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. Let's start with the purpose. You always have to start with the purpose. You want to know why you want to change something. It's better if you're also passionate about it. And maybe you, you even need a catalyst, like I did. About two and a half years ago, my colleagues and I and people around us were disturbed by statements we heard coming from city politicians. One of them was that the requirement for computer science in schools was to be dropped. And another one was that learning a third foreign language is more important than learning a programming language. Like many people who don't have a lot of money to throw at a problem, and don't have direct political influence, which some might say are the same thing. <laughs> we found ourselves helplessly expressing our outrage and our disbelief. We caught ourselves saying things like, that's ridiculous. They have no idea. And several less socially acceptable phrases. <laughs> Today, I'm not completely sure these statements are 100% accurate. But that's not important. What's important is that they acted as a catalyst for me to want to change something. You see, our world is becoming increasingly digital. More and more needs to be programmed. And we already have developer jobs that are not being fulfilled. And we're not teaching programming in schools. We are raising a generation of users. Who is going to program this digital world of ours in five years or in 10? I had already experienced this myself. I had had numerous interviews with young people who were interested in starting a three-year traineeship in application development and had never written a line of code. They had no idea what they were getting into. But what I also wondered was how many kids out there would be sitting in interviews like this if they'd had a glimpse of what programming was about. And that is what I wanted to change. I wanted all kids to have a glimpse of programming. That became my purpose. I couldn't expect schools to change this anytime soon. So, I also had an idea, a plan, a simple one. I thought we could get kids to find out what programming is about if we could get professional software developers to hold classes for them. And if we could get companies to support the action with money, with time for the developers, with other services, it could work. I was certain it could work. But nothing happened. Nothing happened because the purpose and the plan also needs people. Two years ago, almost exactly, Tim and I met at an event. Now, Tim and I knew each other already. We had several talks already. But for some reason, on this evening, I felt compelled to tell him about this idea I had, which I've been sleeping happy. And Tim was so surprisingly enthusiastic about it that he wanted to get started right away. And a couple days later, one of my business partners, Andreas, also joined us, and the hacker school was born. We had a plan, had a purpose, and a plan, and people. But it wasn't concrete enough. First of all, if you have a purpose, it's important for yourself. You need to know why you're doing something. You need to know why is it worth it to change something. But you also need a purpose to sell it to other people. The purpose of the hacker school, after we reformulated, looked like this, 
The purpose of the Hacker School is to inspire young people to learn programming, to nurture and cultivate talents that might otherwise go undiscovered. I still think it's pretty good. <laughs> but even if you have a well-formulated purpose, but not a plan, people will say, hey, that's great. And they will walk away from you, glad that somebody's doing something about it, <laughs> but not them. And that's where your plan comes in again, because you need a plan so that a few motivated people will say to it, hey, I can do that, and they will join you. So, we made a prototype, a kind of uh, framework for classes. We made a plan to have classes four weeks in June. At the time, it was about half a, half a year away, uh, maybe four months. Each class we would have would be one day a week, after school, for two or three hours. And what we needed, of course, now was the people the plan called for. And first of all, we needed the developers, because without developers, it wouldn't work at all. So we wrote a letter, we formulated a letter. Uh, and, they, um, and told people in this letter what we were planning to do with the hacker school and what our purpose was. We also told them where they come in as professional developers, as mentors, as people who can inspire others that programming really is cool. We also included something about pay. Teaching the courses is on an honorary basis, which is the nice formal way of saying there is no pay. <laughs> That's the thing about intrinsic, intrinsically motivated people. Um, we know that intrinsically motivated people desire freedom and responsibility. And that means you can give them a framework, but you let them fill in the details, because they will want to. And that's why our classes look like this. The requirements for the classes were, the courses should be fun and inspiring, they should be hands-on and show young people how to do practical, real things with programs. And that was it. Also included in this letter was an invitation to an evening event in which we promised to tell more and to answer questions. And we knew we were going to get only intrinsically motivated people because we weren't going to pay them. What we didn't expect was that over 40 people were going to show up on the scene. And what we also didn't expect is that after we finished presenting, people were going to stand up and say what kind of class they would like to give. And others would stand up and say they would like to join them. We thought when we started with the plan, with the prototype, that six classes would be fantastic. If we could get six classes, that would be incredible. If we could get two, we'd be happy. The result of this evening was that we had 13 classes to offer for our first session. Thir 13 classes ranging in topics from how to build a website, making games, even controlling robots with code. 13 classes for motivated people with no thought of pay. It was amazing. What about the other group? The companies, the supporters? That went also very well. We soon had classrooms with hardware. We had monetary support. We had a design and a website and flyers and other services. We were all set to go. Except for one thing. We had the developers, we had the companies, we had everything. <laughs> It was kind of obvious, we needed the kids. We had thought, oh, that's not going to be too hard. We just have to let them know what we're offering and they'll come. <laughs> Two weeks before the first class started, we had three registrations. <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine how frustrating that was. We had two dozen people preparing classes, gathering materials, and even 3D printing robots. The hacker school would not exist today. But, luckily, once again, because of motivated people, 
motivated people who got us mailings into schools, who got us an article in a local magazine, and who spread the world. Within those two weeks, we had 50 registrations. Is that a success? We still had to drop five classes, and that was frustrating. But the hacker school was only a couple of months old, hardly known at all. 50 young persons is pretty good. But maybe we shouldn't look at the numbers. Maybe we should look at what we set out to do. And the next few pictures that I'd like to show that went throughout the session, I hope you can see what we saw in the very first minutes of the very first class. We had 50 persons. What we actually had was a bunch of inspired kids. The Hacker School is a story of motivation and inspiration on many levels. But it does follow this principle of purpose, plan, and people of changing the world. But there is one more aspect. You have to keep it going. You need to adjust and improve on the way. And so then it also starts with a P I call it persistence. Persistence keeps you cycling over purpose, plan, and people and improving the whole time. Did Hacker School change the world? So far, in the year and a half since the first session, we have inspired 300 young persons. We have also had interviews and specials on local television and radio. We have had articles in local and national newspapers, and also in one of the most renowned business magazines in Germany. We have half a dozen people starting hacker schools in other cities on an honorary basis. And many more asking when is hacker school coming to their region. We even have local politicians consult us about programming in schools. So where we're not directly inspiring kids, we are raising the awareness for the problem. So yes, we are changing the world. But what about you? Is there something you'd like to change? Something you're really passionate about? Why don't you start today? Define your purpose, make a plan, and inspire people to join you and start changing the world. Thank you.